late, 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 late. I've been waiting for you to summon me ever since you came here. Waiting and waiting and waiting. But my sapling didn't so much as utter my name. Such a heartless thing he is. Cold and cruel and heartless! Another self-important little brat. Just what we need. <laughs> Reminds me of my childhood. <sighs> All right, I'm sorry. It was a joke. Honestly, just a joke. But just now you called for me so earnestly, so fervently. I couldn't possibly stay angry at you. Very well. As your lovely branch, I will lend you my strength. Well, well, well. If it isn't feel, ooh, the mold of feel. It's been too, too long. Not long enough for you to think of any new games, though, apparently. If I were you, I'd be bored of myself. Now let me make something clear. That mortal is mine. No matter what you do, he will never be yours. Never, never, ever! Oh, not even a bit. But what about the others? Surely we can keep them. Keep them either. They're for my amusement and mine alone. And if you lay so much as a finger on my sapling, I'll scatter the contents of his bag all over your precious village. There'll be cold, hard metal, furry, festering food, stinky, sweaty small clothes, and and all manner of other terrible unmentionable things. How would you like that, hmm? All right, all right. But will you not at least let us play with the twins? Just while the others go and see Urianger? Aye, aye, that's all we ask. And we promise we'll play nicely. <sighs> It seems we won't be joining you. I <laughs> We'll reveal the hidden fern neck to you at once. So this is the true Ilmeg. How are you feeling? Better. I think I remember the way now. Apologies for the delay. Shall we go and see Uriange? Your lovely branch is useful, yes? So whenever you're in trouble, you must remember to make use of me!
Uriange, are you in? Unto a world weary of heroes, a hero wends his way. The Exarch did send word that thou would seek me out, but ne'er did I imagine thou wouldst arrive so soon. Full glad am I to see thee once more, my friend, and none the worse for thy travails. Run along, Minfilia. We will meet you outside. But... Another one for you to imbue, if you'd be so kind. I take it thou hast met with our other comrades already? Hmm. That Master Alfino and Mistress Alize now travel in thy company is of great comfort to me. As for the rest... It beginneth in earnest. The hunting of the Light Wardens, and perforce the war with Yulmore. Hark thee then to my words, and through them behold the vision that I did glimpse, that of the Eighth Umbral Calamity. As I drifted hither to the first, traversing the boundary twixt reality and potentiality, I did bear witness to events yet to come. There I saw the combined forces of Eorzea and the Far East offering fierce resistance to the legions of Garlemald. So fierce, in fact, that they did begin to push the enemy back, ilm by painful ilm at first, then yalm by yalm, and malm by malm in time. Yet the joy they felt was short-lived, for in so doing they did force the Empire's hand, Faced with defeat, the Garleans turned to a weapon most vile. Black Rose. Its potency defied all reckoning. Once released, the gas took on a life of its own, wreaking untold carnage not only in Eorzea, but in the provinces of the Empire besides. From fighters upon the front lines to babes in their beds, none were spared. And as the casualties became too numerous to count, so did the fabric of civilization begin to unravel. Nor did the land itself escape unscathed, for spreading from the site of its release, Black Rose brought death to the very soil. To survive amidst the chaos and upheaval, men came to live by the sword, the rule of law giving way, inevitably, to the rule of might. Thus was the spark struck and the fire kindled, and swiftly did it spread as a blaze in a field of straw to engulf every corner of the world. Nations worthy of the name did then cease to exist and those souls brave and true who might have risen to restore order
were no more, for the weapon spared not one, not even thee. An endless age of war, begotten by the blight of Black Rose. Such is the legacy of the eighth umbral calamity which I did behold. No matter the cost, we must forestall this tragedy. To that end, I have labored during my sojourn in this world, discovering in so doing the answer to a pressing mystery. That of Black Rose's inexplicable potency. Come. Dost thou recognize yonder chart? Indeed. Tis a rendering of the elemental wheel, such as one might find in classrooms across the source. As the chart maketh plain, our world is composed of six elements, in addition to which there exist two poles in fundamental opposition. Astral, the active. Umbral, the passive. As a reflection of the source, the first naturally comprises the self-same forces. Yet, curiously, there is a notable divergence in their nomenclature. To be specific, the denizens of this world employ not the terms astral and umbral. Thus was I moved to inquire what name said forces had been assigned. A simple question which yielded a most unexpected answer. Upon demanding the name of the pole aligned with activity and growth, I was told that as life's myriad colors combined to produce black, the people of the first had called it darkness. At this did my mind begin to race. Yet was only when I asked what name had been given to the pole aligned with passivity that mine eyes were opened to the truth. Peace and tranquility being as purest white unmarred by color, I was told it had been given the name of Light. That's umbral light and astral darkness, yes? I'm no etherologist, but it strikes me that the nomenclature of the first is rooted in the generation of the two forces, while our own appears to focus on their effects, which makes one wonder. Have we had it backwards all this time? Tis indeed a compelling question, and one which beareth closer examination. Yet what knowledge we already possess sufficeth to explain the chain of events. The phenomenon of etheric thinning observed in the source is the consequence of light, the power of stasis, flowing in from the first to stifle the movement of ether within the land. And according to Master Alfino, Black Rose slayeth by halting the circulation of ether within living beings. Should such a weapon be unleashed even as the first were rejoined, replete as it is with light, we would have a disaster of untold proportions on our hands, a calamity. Well, at least we have a better grasp of what we're facing. Our objective, however, remains unchanged. We are to eliminate the Light Warden of Ilmeg. Speaking of which, were you able to ascertain its whereabouts? Aye. Tis all but certainly ensconced within Leergear, 
the castle which standeth in the midst of the lake. To enter said stronghold, we must needs turn to the Pixies for aid. Fortunately, I have become quite adept at courting their cooperation. Henceforth shall I accompany you, and do all in my power to ensure that my vision doth not come to pass. Thank <laughs> you.